Sony a7C Mark II has all of the hallmarks for being the best full frame camera for street and travel photography. And that's because it's essentially just a Sony a7 Mark IV squashed down into a smaller and lighter package, which is causing a lot of photographers to suggest that this could be the a7 Mark IV killer. Now, I've owned the a7 Mark IV for a number of years now, and it's still my main photography camera. So after hearing that claim, I was certainly very keen to find out whether I would feel the same way. And hypothetically, if I was to have all of my time again, would I just bypass this a7 Mark IV entirely and go straight for this newer and more portable a7C Mark II. Now despite their size differences, somewhat unsurprisingly there are a number of similarities between these two options. The main one being that they both use the same full frame 33 megapixel sensor with the benefit of 759 face detect AF points. They both use the same 1.04 million dot flip out tiltable touchscreen and they both have the same type of battery albeit that the battery life is slightly better on the a7 Mark IV because it's capable of capturing around 580 shots from a full charge versus 540 on this new a7c mark ii they both use the same style of mode dial that has the little switch around it allowing you to quickly switch between photo and video modes and one slight difference is that the one on the a7 mark IV is locked in place and has to be altered by pressing in a button first which does make it slightly less prone to being moved by accident they both have three proper command dials with a fourth dial around the d-pad though again one small difference is that one of the top dials on the a7 mark IV is lockable oh, and they both max out at 10 frames per second in burst rate and i think that's about everything but please do let me know in the comments if I've missed anything. But all of that said, there are certainly a bigger number of differences between these cameras, and it's these which will ultimately determine which of these cameras is the best to go for. So let's get the most obvious difference out of the way first, and let's talk about the size and weight. Now, as I've spoken about previously in my review of this camera's bigger brother, the Sony a7CR, I honestly think that the size difference between these two cameras has been slightly overlooked because most people just make a blanket statement saying that this camera is smaller and lighter than this one. And although that is absolutely true, I rarely see anyone showing the real difference in any detail. And I do think that's a fairly important thing to know because if you actually place them side by side, the difference really isn't as dramatic as you may first think. By and large, you only really save a few millimeters here and there, though the biggest difference is obviously with the height, where the top mounted EVF on the A7 Mark IV does stick out around 2.5 centimeters or roughly an inch above the A7C Mark II. In terms of weight, there's around 150 gram difference, which certainly isn't insignificant, particularly if you want to travel as light as physically possible. But also just to put that into context, that's about the same weight as most modern day smartphones. However, one thing to consider is that this size reduction does come with a number of compromises, some of which will be more obvious than others. For example, the EVF on this camera is smaller and has a lower resolution of 2.36 million dots versus 3.68 million dots on the A7 Mark IV. That number difference might not mean anything immediately, but when you look at them side by side, the EVF on the A7 Mark IV is larger and also sharper than the A7 7C Mark II, but is this a deal breaker? Well, personally, I really don't think so. I know the viewfinder on this camera has received a lot of scrutiny online, but for me, I don't think it's bad. And to be honest, in isolation, I doubt most people would even question its quality. It's only really when you compare them side by side that you really notice the difference. But all of that said, if I was forced to pick a favorite, I will admit I will always go for the larger EVF on the A7 Mark IV because the bigger picture and sharper image just allows you to see more of the frame and makes it slightly nicer to shoot with. The other hardware sacrifices that have been made to this camera include there being less custom buttons and only one SD card slot. Whilst the A7 Mark IV has dual card slots, one of which is compatible with both SD cards and CF Express cards. And seeing as things seem to be going the way of CF Express cards these days, that may mean that the A7 Mark IV is actually slightly more future-proofed in that sense. Though the big one for me is just a lack of a joystick. Now, if you're like me and you do prefer using a joystick for adjusting the position of of the AF points and just generally navigating around the camera, then unfortunately you will need to adapt your shooting habits when using this A7C Mark II. However, the good news is that there are plenty of different options. The most obvious one is just to press the center button, which will allow you to quickly move the AF points around. So truthfully, this is a little bit slow and clunky as you aren't able to make diagonal movements. You can of course also use the touchscreen functionality, but personally I found it much easier just to set the AF on button to AF tracking. This way I could just hover the AF point over my subject, press and hold the AF on button and so long as I kept this button depressed the camera would track the subject around the frame. This is particularly handy when taking photos of people in the street for instance as you can just lock onto them from a distance and then discreetly rattle off a bunch of shots as you pass them by. Though I should also mention that the a7 IV is also able to focus and track subjects using this exact same method so this isn't a technique that's reserved solely for this new camera. One thing I will admit is that after spending the last few weeks shooting and reviewing older cameras for the channel switching to this modern camera just feels like you're cheating. The AF is just 
lightning fast and does such an amazing job of keeping the focus locked onto the target. And as a result, I saw a significant increase in my hit rate when shooting. I could say exactly the same thing for the A7 Mark IV. So whichever camera you pick, you are going to benefit from top quality autofocus. However, one benefit that this new camera has over the A7 Mark IV is that it takes advantage of Sony's latest AI driven technology, allowing it to identify and lock onto multiple subjects, including improved people tracking, trains, planes, birds, cars, aliens. Honestly, at this point, there isn't much a Sony camera can't lock onto and track. And all of this works just as well as you would expect. And I think if you are looking to shoot a wide range of subjects and not just stick to street or travel photography, then having the ability to accurately track different subjects is certainly an advantage. But if that's not the case and you mainly shoot street photography or portraits, then I would imagine that these features would rarely get used. Plus, in my experience, I have never been upset with the AF performance on my A7 Mark IV, so you're pretty well covered whichever option you decide to go for. Moving on to image quality, and because these cameras use the same 33 megapixel sensor, the image quality is practically identical, which is hardly surprising. However, there are a few slight differences between these cameras, which are loosely related to image quality and could make an impact on your purchasing decision. The first is IBIS, and although both cameras do have in-body image stabilization, the newer A7C Mark II does benefit from a seven stop advantage, whilst the A7 Mark IV is just five stops. Now, this is potentially a nice little benefit if you do happen to experiment with slower shutter speeds in your street photography, as it'll further increase the likelihood of you capturing a sharp shot while shooting handheld. The other difference to consider is that the maximum shutter speed when using the mechanical shutter on this camera is capped at 1 4,000th of a second, whilst the A7 Mark IV can reach 1 8,000th of a second. And sure, this may sound like a slightly trivial thing to even mention, but as I found out when shooting with the A7CR, which has the same shutter mechanism as this camera, this can make a big difference when shooting in bright lighting conditions, particularly if you like shooting with a wide maximum aperture. And that's because I found myself quickly hitting this maximum shutter speed and being forced to stop down the aperture to gain a correct exposure. Now, technically, you can actually shoot with a shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second on this camera, but you do need to switch over to the electronic shutter. And the downside with this is that it can create that rolling shutter or wobbly jello effect when taking panning shots or shooting fast moving subjects. Now, all of that said, if you just tend to favor narrower apertures when shooting street photography, then this will almost certainly never be a problem for you, but it's always good to know the potential limitations of the camera that you're thinking about buying. Now, the final and arguably the most important factor we need to discuss is the price, because at the time of recording, there is just a $100 difference between these two cameras, with the A7C Mark II obviously being the slightly cheaper option. However, it's also worth mentioning that because the A7 Mark IV has been out for a while now, it's totally possible to pick up a good quality used camera from somewhere like MPB or eBay, and typically the prices range between $1,900 and $2,000, which does technically make it the cheapest option. So going back to my original question, if I was to have all of my time again, would I still buy the A7 Mark IV or would I instead go for the A7C Mark II? Well, personally, I would stick with the A7 Mark IV, but that's purely because I am personally more than happy to carry 150 grams of extra weight in exchange for slightly better ergonomics and better hardware. But that said, you should always base your own conclusion on your own personal needs. If the compromises made to the design of this camera will never get in your way, but you'd benefit greatly from owning a camera that's as small and light as possible, then the A7C Mark II might possibly be the best option after all.